Why does it seem like masculinity is shunned lately? I think modern men are being made to pay for the advantages that their fathers and grandfathers had. And in a world in which we've moved from a brawn-based to a brain-based economy, and you don't need protectors and providers that much, we've allowed women to access education and employment and become socioeconomically viable on their own. They don't literally don't need no man for many of the women, two women for every one man completing a four-year U.S. college degree, women aged 21 to 29 earn 1,111 pounds more than men on average. So they're literally like ahead by most of the key objective metrics that people under the age of 30 care about. What's the role for men in that? And it's also, there's a current trend of it being cool to dunk on whoever was seen to have had the advantages in the past, right? It's like straight white male syndrome. Like, straight that had advantages in the past because people who are homosexual were mistreated. Fucking Alan Turing was chemically castrated. Uh, white, slavery wasn't that long ago. Like, yes, also had some benefits. Male, women women weren't allowed to go to university until not, not so long ago, They were, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it uses errors of the past to make compensations in the present. And that fundamentally means that like men as one of the biggest groups that have seemed to have had some kind of benefit immediately get dunked to the bottom of the pile. And yet, if you look even remotely closely at the outcomes that lots of guys are getting, I don't think that there's much evidence that guys are flourishing at the moment. Like I think it was the first quarter of last year, I think like 33% of new CEOs were female. And that was heralded as like new frontier, but until it's at 50%, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh God, do 50% of women want to be CEOs? Like, really? Is that a life that you aspire to? I don't fucking aspire to be a CEO and I own my own company. I don't want to be a CEO. It sounds like it sucks. Like I'm looking forward to the day when someone else steps in and takes that role. So guys have had it, guys had it good in some ways for a while. And it's just like, it's like, cultural reparations for men to pay this fine that certain areas of the world believe that they owe to people. And that means yeah. that like mistreating them or considering them to be in a privileged position is something that everybody should focus on. How do you navigate that as a guy? Not self-pitying, I think. Like, would it have been easier as a guy to have been born 50 years ago? Maybe. Like, maybe, because you would have been able to out-earn and out-educate most of the women in your local village or whatever uh, pretty easily, because 50 years ago was when Title IX was introduced, which was to get more women into universities. So it would have been, you would have been the highest performing person and hypergamy would have allowed you to have risen to the top and women, more women would have found you attractive. But it's not. And pitying yourself or pitying the world or like screaming and, and creating a victim mindset around yourself is literally just giving the power to somebody else. And this is Alex's thing, right? It's like wherever you point the finger of blame or wherever you point the finger of responsibility is where you point the finger of power. It's like if you do that, it's like this is you. This is you. It's only you that's going to come and save you with regards to this. So navigating it. It's difficult. I think that being open and honest as a guy as well, like, look, it's fucking tough. It's tough in, in many, many ways. And even if it looks like guys have got it all sorted from the outside, I, I think that there are so many that are struggling. And that's something that there needs to be a, like a big cultural shift around, a massive cultural shift. So you talk about suppressing men, right? That's where, what's the word that you use? What do you mean? Like how masculinity and men like you go into war mode and then when you're not in war mode you're suppressed or something like that i'm not sure if that's me it, it well you used a different word rather than suppressed okay. how like masculinity or whatever is diminishing okay or okay. how it's yeah, in a, yeah. a, a a point right now where like it's kind of being hidden okay i would say like it's that. being eroded yeah for sure eroded yeah yeah yeah. sure so that is a product of the environment that we're in mm -hmm. so if that is the case you can't necessarily change the environment no government body is going to step in and change the environment mm. and that's just going to be a byproduct of the environment that we are placed in mm. how do you then necessarily like change that 
Like, are you supposed to just accept the fact that it's an issue? Okay, it's an issue. And it's because of some external factors that we can't necessarily change. And if you look at data, it shows that, like you said, test or you've claimed or whatever, testosterone is like decreasing in masculinity, is decreasing in stuff like this. What do you do about it? Yeah, testosterone's dropped 0.1% every month since 1950. That's crazy. <laughs> That's the way that people get uh, prescribed TRT from doctors. So a lot of the time, there's a, a bunch of places in Austin that do this. Doctors will use the normal range for testosterone levels for men from 1950 to gauge off whether or not you've got low testosterone. Mm. Could they have just been high in 1950 or is it like... No, it's just, well, maybe, I don't know. I guess we, we, we didn't have the, the levels in like 1850, but I would want to know what happened between 1850 and 1950 for us to be right. like, oh, men all had yeah. this huge surge in testosterone. That doesn't seem like... It's going to be too likely. But yeah, dude, I, I don't disagree. Like if any other group has a problem, we ask, what can we do to fix society? If men have a problem, we say, what is it that men are doing where they can't fix themselves? Like we spend billions and billions in taxpayer funded money to set up charities and initiatives and research to try and help groups that are struggling. Like the biggest risk to a man under the age of 30 in terms of his own mortality, are literally the hands that he has. Like you're more likely to die by suicide than any other way under the age of 30, or 18 to 30. Like that's a big deal. It's a fucking big deal. That doesn't sound like privilege to me. Oh, well, you know, guys have had it good for so long. Oh, yeah, well, like fucking apart from the war and the dangerous jobs and the like 40% of us, only 40% of us reproducing, it's like 60% of men not reproducing. That doesn't sound very good. In terms of how you can at least begin to change the, the culture around it, I think that accepting that guys are struggling and like changing the narrative, like the deadbeat dad, like the Homer Simpson, the Peter Griffin, the like sort of stupid father role. If you ever watch any kids TV show as well, it's always that the boys are kind of boisterous and, and, and clumsy and, and try to sort of cheat or or use their size or their group numbers in some way and the girls are smart and like clever mm -hmm. and and more dexterous and and they end up winning because they're more like noble and and uh um inventive in the way that they come up with stuff it's like all right well what's the subtext that that tells young boys not to say that like girls shouldn't win shit like they should but I'm not convinced that like an entire generation of people that were brought up on Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin have got like high expectations for themselves. Again, if you're taking your role models from that, and this is one of the other things that come across, like, look, should you really be looking to Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin for your like father role model advice? Probably not. But in a world that's got more single parent households than ever before and more absent father figures than ever before, where should they look? Like, all of the people that had problems with Jordan Peterson's ascension or Andrew Tate's ascension where should the guys that followed them got their role models from? Genuine question. Where should they? Well, they should have got it from dad. What if dad wasn't at home? Because that's a huge percentage of young boys. They should have got it from, I've, I'm yet to hear from the people that are usually critical about that stuff, like a good answer. I'm yet to hear someone say, hmm, yeah, like, whatever fucking initiative this is sports stars or superheroes or something it's like all right well like that's what people see their public figures on the internet as they see them as like what thought leaders in some way or another or a surrogate father figure 